Hello. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the next steps of solar cell manufacturing. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, what is saw damage and how do we get rid of the saw damaged silicon, so saw damaged edge. The step that we are going to discuss now is surface texturing. So I briefly mentioned in the first lecture on solar cells that texturing is nothing but giving a certain pattern to your uh, to your material or to the surface. Now, how do you create a pattern on a surface? You can do it in two ways. Either you add some pattern, you add some materials, or you can just remove or etch away some parts of the material so the surface becomes rough, uneven, and the surface area increases. So that is also another way of uh, texturing it. In the case of silicon, in the case of solar cells, this is what we do. We etch some material in order to remove the silicon and our goal here is to improve the trapping of the light. In many microfabrication processes, when we do etching or when we do this kind of surface uh, texturing, that is done in order to improve or increase the surface area. Here, yes, we are also in increasing the surface area, but the goal here is to, uh, to capture incident light, which is uh, at different angles. We want to minimize the losses caused by the complete reflection of the light. Okay, so... As I mentioned, now we do etching. And since our previous step was also a wet etching process where we used um, some alkaline solution, we can further use this alkaline solution and we also perform the wet etch for this next step. So again, etching can be done here either using an acidic solution or a basic solution. And we will learn what are the differences what is the difference in uh, in the patterns that we create if it is an acidic or a basic edge. Now, let me tell you that we are going to use basic edge or in the industrial process, th there is always the etching is always done using basic solution. And why? Okay, first of all, these are the two reactions that might be taking place. These are believed to be taking place when we perform this basic etch. Basic etch, first of all, is uh, is basic as you can understand. The pH is pretty high in these, so it has to be above nine. And when we use very concentrated solutions of uh, certain base, then we may, in this case, have above twelve pH. So these are very high pH solutions. Hmm. Now, basic. Uh, materials, if you think of some standard bases, mm, sodium hydroxide comes to your mind, potassium hydroxide comes to your mind. And so these are the kind of materials that we, uh, you know, dissolve in water and then we use the solution of KOH or NaOH, for example. And we also add sometimes some agents that will improve the diffusion of the material. We will come to that. Mm. Okay, so if I think if I say that M is my metal, Na, which is sodium or potassium, that is my metal, and we take a solution MOH, hmm. so metal hydroxide in water, then there may be these two things, the, the two reactions that are shown in blue color, these two might be the possible reactions that are taking place. And as you, uh, as you can see that in, in the first one, there is an oxide of silicon being formed. So some silicon is being consumed. In the second reaction, there is a metal silicon trioxide being formed. So this is also, here also we are consuming some silicon. And this, uh, this compound is soluble in water. This is silicate, which is soluble in water. So then it goes away with your aqueous solution and we get etched silicon. Now, Many researchers believe that it is only the first uh, reaction that is taking place. Some believe that both are taking place and some believe that the second reaction is taking place. However, experimentally, it is very well known that the etching is taking place. And interestingly enough, you can very precisely control this etch rate by controlling the concentration of your solution, hmm, concentration of the hydroxide, the metal hydroxide. Or you can also control the temperature and that is how you can very precisely get your different patterns onto the substrate on the silicon. Okay, so now what is interesting about this alkaline etch? Hmm. 
and how is it different from the acidic H as I mentioned. So acidic H basically is isotropic. What is isotropic again? When the etching is the rate of etching is same in all directions then it is isotropic etching but if certain planes are preferred hmm, preferred in the sense that you have higher etch rate for certain planes com compared to certain other planes crystal planes we are talking about in that case you will have you know um, certain patterns like you know how the planes are oriented onto each other hmm. so you will have maybe one plane is is being etched very fast one is not in that case you can get patterns like pyramid shapes mm. so this is what happens when you perform the etching using for example koh mm. so silicon now silicon has 110 planes 100 planes and 111 diagonal planes are the 111 planes that we talked about before mm. so what happens is the etch rates for 110 and 100 planes are much higher compared to the family of 111 planes in this particular case. Hmm. So the edge ratios, now again the, the ratio or the rates of etching can be controlled as I said by temperature as well as uh, by the concentration. But if your KOH for example is at 44-45% uh, percent solution and it's uh, about 80 to 85 degree centigrade temperature then the edge ratios are shown on the screen 100 to 111 is about 300 and 110 to 111 is about 600 times hmm. so you understand that one plane is etching faster than the other so how will it look like if i draw it now this the first um, schematic shown here is about is of a vertical edge this is what we actually want hmm. when we want to edge something what do we want we want it to have you know this is what we expect that there will be some sort of groove or trench okay now this orange color thing brown color thing that I, that is shown on top of the silicon wafer in this uh, image mm, this is a cross section so you have you see a silicon wafer on top of that there is a mask which can be a polymer mask mm. i'm showing it with the mask right now for uh, you know for showing for explaining how different types of edges create different patterns so mask is nothing but some sort of polymer film which has holes let's say. Mm. So your edge solution will only go through that hole and the other parts are masked. Mm. That is why it's called a mask. So let's say there's a polymer layer with a hole mm. and through that hole when your solution goes inside then this is what you expect mm. because the solution is etching away the silicon it's eating up the silicon dissolving the silicon so this is what we expect but this does not quite happen in the case of acidic edge or isotropic edge this is what happens you get kind of a well mm. because it is isotropic as i mentioned then you have in all directions the same rate of etching now what also happens sometimes it will cut it under your polymer also hmm. it will dissolve your silicon from under the polymer as well so that is known as the undercut and it is also used in various microfabrication processes we can discuss that later okay now what happens in the case of silicon the one that i was just talking about this koh edge you have anisotropic edge then you have you know less etching in 111 planes so what you get is these pyramid shaped structures mm. typically with some flat uh, plane in the bottom mm. so it, they are called square pyramid structures but this is how they look like huh? and the angle at which they are inclined always is 54.7 degrees because that is determined by the crystal structure mm. so what does this mean it means that if I do alkaline edge this is the if I do it without the mask now if I do it for the whole vapor so I will get this kind of patterns this kind of square pyramid patterns onto the silicon surface however if I did the isotropic edge either with acid or I did it with dry etching for example oxygen plasma then I'll get more random patterns what do we want we want to trap more and more light so in our case for example if these are the rays of the light in our case anisotropic edge works better mm. because then the angles of the light can be you know we can capture light incident at various angles mm. so this is what is performed 
for surface texturing of silicon. And if you have 110 wafers or 100 uh, oriented wafers, then in that case you will get different structures. Okay. Now the preferred orientation of this etching, what is the reason for that? Interestingly enough, the mechanism for this is still not completely clear. Hmm. People believe that it, I mean, of course, there are different activation energies of different planes. That, that is why you have different rates of the reaction. So that is fine. But why do we have these different activation energies is not clear. It could just be that the concentration of atoms is different in different planes. And that is why, uh, that is how the uh, reaction takes place. But there are also some researchers who believe that there is oxide formation or hydrogen bubble formation, as you see, when the first reaction, um, that is why these, this is the uh, you know group that believes in the first reaction and believes that these bubbles of hydrogen gas hmm, are blocking certain surfaces which cannot further etch. Hmm. Then there is also this belief that the oxide that is being produced during this reaction is protecting some part of the silicon and that part is then not etching fast enough. However, the mechanism is not clear. What we know is this does take place and it always takes place in this way. Okay. Now, mechanism of the overall reaction in general, this is known. Mm. So first what happens is the reactant molecule molecules diffuse. So reactant is your um, uh, alkaline material. They diffuse into the silicon. Mm. Then they get absorbed. Then there is the surface reaction hmm. and then finally the product gets desorbed. Hmm. So this is kind of um, an accepted mechanism and isopropyl alcohol or IPA is added in this reaction generally because it increases the diffusion, controls the etch rates and also improves the uniformity of the process. So it basically allows for a better control. Okay, now in addition to uh, these um, uh, the alkaline solutions that I mentioned, you also have some other etchants, but because either because they are hazardous or be because they are more expensive, they are not generally used for industrial processes. Okay, now you can understand that when we are doing this uh, kind of chemical reaction, then you may have some residual material. Mm. And you need to clean up that resi residual material. Now, since we were doing alkaline etch, how do we clean an alkaline uh, material of the residues? By neutralizing it using some acidic solution. Mm. So there are certain acidic solution which are standard solutions for this um, step, acidic clean, which uh, can be a combination of hydrofluoric acid and hydrochloric acid in water and then there is also an RCA clean which is a common cleaning method uh, for uh, for the um, for silicon vapors. RCA I think stands for Radiochemistry Institute of America or something like that. That was the place where this method was developed and that is why um, it is still known as the RCA cleaning method. So you can use these different methods for cleaning your surface. So that is in fact our next step of silicon, uh, of silicon based solar cell manufacturing, the cleaning process. So that is the next step also we have discussed.